All right, guys. Well, this is take two of Sunday Scan because the first time I did it, it was muted. So uh, hopefully this one uh, works a little bit better and I don't run into a situation where I have to record a 40-minute video twice. Maybe this one will be a little bit shorter. Um, but, you know, coming off the best week, best day of my career, which has been 17 years. So first and foremost, uh, like I've said, I'm, you know, obviously we send out T-shirts to people that – subscribe, like, and comment to uh, this video. Uh, so this week we're going to pick five. And uh, so we've got Dave Shell. We've got Trading Learning 101. We've got Pete Trades who talked about longevity, which I think is probably the most crucial thing and most relevant thing right now uh, because, you know, you got to ask yourself, are you going to be here next year? And quite honestly, some of the people that are watching this video there's a very good chance that you're not going to be. Um, and the reason for that is because, don't get me wrong, you're, you're making great money, but there's no strategy. There's no understanding of what even you did to make that money. You just bought stocks and we happen to be in the hottest market ever uh, and it worked out. So um, so that was a, a good comment there. Sean Marsh uh, posted nobody faster hashtag, which is great. That's the one that we use uh, because... Look, quite honestly, we have the fastest news guys in the industry in the room. Uh, and uh, not only between the news, but also the filings. As you guys saw, I posted the S3 on GNUS, which was the most timely thing uh, ever and probably saved a ton of people, uh, as well as gave the opportunity for many to get short before it went into a circuit halt because it actually did hang around for a little while uh, because it was so early. And then Mike Fox, who said, uh, you can and should do more, which is super, super important, uh, especially in this current market environment. I mean, uh, it's, it's very important to have energy and, and be able to create energy. Um, and that's why I stress working out so much, uh, because it's, it's, uh, you need it right now. Especially, I've got a newborn. So from my time is basically 5 a.m. to 8.15ish in the morning to watch him. And it's been super difficult because he wants to eat right at 7 a.m., which is the most important time for me uh, on seeing some of this action, seeing how it reacts right out of 7 a.m., seeing what may be the potentials for the day and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's been you know stressful in that sense. It's been uh, you know tiring in that sense, but I've, I'm building the energy because of decisions that I'm making with uh, Zach, which um, you know, all of you guys have been invited to. So um, I, I'll put that in the scan as well. But uh, everybody's been invited to do Tuesday and Thursdays from uh, at 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sundays at 8 a.m. Zoom workout class, 30 minutes. You don't really need much. A couple dumbbells, kettlebell, or at many times we're doing body weight. But you're creating energy. You're creating that mindset. The right mindset is so much there's so much correlation between having the right mindset, the right, you know, kind of feel uh, of your body into trading, right? So body right, mind right, trade right. So think about that. Key tools this week. Best week of my career, best day of my career. Was it all possible at any broker? No. So that's why I wore, you know, this shirt tonight. Uh, just because Centerpoint is and always will be one step ahead of the rest. Uh, they had the inventory available when we needed it. Um, the customer service is second to none. And, uh, you know, without a doubt, they're, they're the most incredible uh, broker out there. And they're always one step above the competition. Um, and, and I say that because they're always thinking one step ahead. They're already on to the next thing that's going to be important in three months, they're already there. And so I, I think that uh, if you're not trading there, uh, you should consider it. Uh, it doesn't need to be your main account, but you should always consider having multiple clearing firms, multiple brokerages. Um, but without a doubt, without them, this week would not have been possible. So a big shout out to them, as well as, you know, a lot of people always think it's only for bigger accounts. Not true. Um, so they've, they've launched Centerpoint Lite. So you guys are able to open an account with 10 grand uh, instead of the minimum of 50 typically, which uh, for IU members, it's 30. Uh, 
I've got my key um, key thoughts for tonight written out, so I'll go through those one by one, and then we'll get right into the scan. Uh, like I said, this is the second time I'm doing this, so I guess I had a little bit of practice, and maybe I can shave uh, five to seven minutes off this thing. Um, if I go too fast and you guys have more questions, write them in the comment section. I'll be able to check those out throughout the next couple days. Um, so going back to the trade of the year, great. You know, it felt good, but the most important part as a trader, the most important part as you progress uh, in your career as a trader is make it feel just as good as a, a loss. It don't feel good at all, but get over it, right? Um, if you are, if you stay down about a loser, it's it's negative energy. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to make you any money. Uh, you're always going to be feeling down, etc. If you're always, you know, happy and giddy, and and you just stay on cloud nine from that uh, from that winner, then it's it's going to stop you from getting back to business. It's going to stop you from getting back to even, you know, even keel and, and ready to go and 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 focus on the next one. Um, the sooner that you can get back to, it should be expected, as uh, Greg LX21 says, uh, the, the better off you're going to be. It should be expected. It's a direct result of trading well, right? So if you're trading well, you should expect that to happen. So yeah, it was a huge gain, but it should be expected. That's the right mindset as you progress as a trader. Uh, it's going to help you get to that next level. The, the, the sooner you, you jump around and, and, you know, with your hands up and fist pump all weekend, um, it's, it's the wrong mindset. So, uh, next was uh, the highs are, lo highs are less and lows are always low. And welcome to Trading 101. So, you know, the thing is, is you know, it, it sucks, right? Because you got to get over the, the win. Big deal. Uh, but unfortunately, the loss is always still hurt, right? So, um, same thing. Just move on to the next trade. The sooner you can get back to the next trade, you're good to go. Save trade this week versus AAL trade. Uh, a lot of people are, are asking me about sizing up and um, managing positions and things like that. When you start to size up, it's more important than ever to have some type of uh, trade plan in the sense of trading around a core. Uh, a core might be, say you start into 5,000 shares and you add to the winner, you're into 10,000, it starts to go, it's nearing a key level, you're anticipating it to break down, you get to 20,000 shares. Flushes out, you cover 10. Starts to grind back up, you cover five. You're back to your 5,000 original core. That's trading around the core. Starts to break down, you start to scale back up, okay? And so th the more size you use, that becomes increasingly, increasingly, increasingly important. You know, if you're just trading normal size here and there and, and you're letting the trade work, that's great. And that works in a lot of markets and, and that's, I love to get on the right side of the trade. I don't need to be outsized. I like to get on the right side of the trade and let it work for me, find the next one, let it work for me and, and carry on. But there are days like AAL, S-A-V-E, cruise lines maybe this week, that you can use an outsized position because it's an A plus, you know, setup ready to go but you have to manage that position. And Save was a perfect example where I was, I crushed it off the open on Thursday. I was up huge, but I mismanaged the, the covers because I scaled up, I sized up, flushed out, and I covered some, but I, I was too slow. I didn't have my wish orders out there. Wish orders are what I consider, you know, kind of orders ready to go. Uh, you expect it to flush here and, and be there. Because a lot of times you'll see it flush out and snap right back up. You saw that on XSPA, uh, which was a small cap. You saw it on save. I'll show you guys XSPA uh, later on in this uh, video. But if you're there, it takes out the thought. It takes out the emotion of maybe I could make more. That's what I dealt with because I was up huge and the, the, the stock had ran huge. Uh, so I immediately go, oh, great. Okay. I, I just crushed it. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I get another buck. I was up about a buck 50 per share. Nope. Swipe back up 50 cents, grind back up 20, 20 more. All of a sudden my PL goes from huge to, you know, huge to <laughs> straight down. And so that's where I, as a stubborn trader have the most difficulty where I'm up big, 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 
and then it starts to kind of go the other way and I think I was just up big maybe it'll go back let's see what it does famous last words right so anyway I managed that position fine uh, you know it, it took a little bit of headspace uh, for maybe an hour or two but you know I, I managed it I, I cut it off and uh, moved on but my point in telling you that is because I moved on and I wasn't letting it crowd my headspace I got AAL which was one of my best trades of the year before Friday right so AAL ended up being better than the shop trade that we discussed uh, and had I been fighting or uh, keeping save as a tenant as we say uh, and not evicted it I would have missed the AAL trade so uh, that's the uh, thought process there keep that in mind as you size up uh, and again not every trade is a size up trade that's gonna get you in trouble the other points that I had was somebody always is gonna make more uh, be inspired not influenced and stay in your own lane right so this is very important especially on weeks like this right I crushed it great what does that mean for you it may mean nothing it may mean you made the sim similar trades and you crushed it too but I was talking to a few of my buddies and you know a lot of them crushed it and some of them didn't but they were saying oh, you know I, I feel like I should have made more and they did phenomenal for them right it's all relative so and I asked the question you know if you had your blinders on and you didn't know about them would you still be happy with the trades that you made yeah so it's because of those outside influences you feel like you are no longer you know crushing it in your manner or you're, you're no longer uh, you know doing as well as you you thought as soon as you made the trade but you are you got to look at that curve look at how you've been trading the last three months your day will come your trade will come you will know when to take that trade but don't be discouraged by everybody killing it that's gonna do nothing it's all noise and it's gonna take you off base where you need to be you need to be focused put the blinders on like the the horses in New York City focus on you focus on you being better than you yesterday and keep at it your day will come and you just really need to focus on that not what others are doing okay that's the the upside and the downside of social networks and you know things like that is you feel great until the next tweet right and then you feel like you didn't do as well so my best day could have been a third or a half of somebody else's it is what it is um, last week we did the discussion about you know how I think a lot of people are gonna lose uh, a lot of money real fast and I think a lot of blow-ups are coming I think a lot of people are going to um, piss away a lot of money and I think the you know DLPN was an example of this this week you know it ramped up and then it raised the next morning GNUS was warning about GNUS how I would not be long um, it doesn't matter if it squeezes I know not to be long right at, at, at certain point it becomes reckless to be long yeah there was a nice squeeze set up yeah there was great opportunity but if you start to size in and you keep on thinking 15 20 25 and you don't know the first thing about uh, you know what's in store what's coming uh, then you're in for a surprise and when they filed that s3 for me it was expected it was just when are they gonna do it and as you guys saw you saw how fast that filing came in the uh, IU community but um, if you didn't know that and you're just uh, a Robin Hood kind of person that's chasing everything because it works and it just keeps on going up you might have this newfound money but even if it's 5,000 shares 10,000 shares and when it drops five six seven bucks and you can't do anything about it that's a lot of money that's a blown account so keep that in mind and I think the biggest thing I had a, a friend of a friend you know similar situation this week where um, absolutely crushing it and you know casinos are down so he couldn't go and gamble he likes to, to gamble a lot and so he was crushing it and thought he was the man in the market so you know what got you here you know doubled a, a couple hundred thousand dollar account by being reckless same thing I talked about last week and then keep on going keep on going keep on going and you buy the wrong one you size up into the wrong one and he ended up cutting his account in half a couple hundred grand so my key point here is to wire if you are new to trading in the last 
three months, four months. If you just happen to kill it and, and, and compounded gains and went from a couple grand to 100 grand or 50 grand to 200 grand or whatever you might have done, wire a lot out. Wire a lot out. You don't need a lot to trade, uh, especially if you don't have much experience yet, especially if you haven't blown up yet. Every big trader that I know has blown up, if not once, twice. Okay? So, if you haven't blown up yet, if you haven't blown an account, if you haven't taken a huge loss yet, wire up because you're going to. And then that way, at least when you do, one, you've still got a bunch of money on the sidelines, and two, you have the ability to recognize, okay, all right, yeah, Nate was right. I was being a little reckless, and it finally did catch up. Do I wire back in, or do I kind of think about my strategy? At least you have money at home now because otherwise, it's gone. It's gone in one filing. It's gone overnight. It's gone you know, with one wrong move. So that's really the only point here. And the other point about wiring was the more you wire, the more you wire. And this is for other types of traders, more uh, career type traders. One of, the, one of my buddies in the, in the IU room, uh, great trader, huge, huge swings, big PL swings, big action, um, but never wires. And he regrets not wiring last year uh, had a, a, a huge run and and didn't take off positions and then, you know, did take some off but put them back on and there was a point where he could have wired out just enormous amount of cash. And the reason is we fall into this trap where, you know, you get the account to a certain level and that was the level that you wanted to get to. But when you get there, it changes and then you need to get to this level and then you need to get to this level, Right. And it's a continual cycle of it's not enough, got to get to the next level, next level, next level. And then you never wire and then you make a really bad decision and you lose half of your account. So he wired out on uh, Thursday or Friday and then he's wiring out again on Monday and he called me. He goes, dude, it felt so good. First time I've wired out and you know, don't get me wrong, he's made a lot of money. But first time I've wired out in over two years and you know, it's just, it's a surreal feeling because it's actually real money. You know, it's just fictitious numbers in your account uh, as long as you let it be, unless you take it out. So I'm not saying don't grow your accounts, but if you're, if you're a career type trader, if you've been doing this a while and you've never pulled money out, consider it. Um, just because you, you want to make sure that you get in the habit of doing that because the more you do it, the more you do it. And it adds up fast when you bring it back home. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, themes. Themes are super, super hot right now. I always talk about themes and sectors. So sector and theme that's hot right now is oil and gas. So we'll go over that on scan tonight. Um, but, uh, I felt like it was coming. I wish I bought it the day before, but you know, I just joined the trend on Friday. Uh, it looks like it might continue. There was some other positive news over the weekend. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, but we'll get into that. We're adding more webinars at uh, Investors Underground. So Alex Pizzito, um, who was pretty young when he came on to, uh, I mean, he's still a young kid, but um, super young uh, when he came on IU. Uh, smart, smart kid. Um, he's been trading for quite some time now and done really, really well. So uh, I'm always trying to think of who would really benefit uh, IU guys the, the best. Um, and uh, so he was a uh, one that came to mind. So we're going to be adding more and more people to doing webinars, but he's the the one that we've added two times per month. Uh, so now we've got about six, seven guys that are doing webinars and more to come. So we're trying to continually make the, you know, what we offer better and better uh, for you guys. So one thing that I said before, and just uh, one thing to think about with your trading right now and how you're treating it and what you're doing, ask yourself, will you be here next year? That's our goal right now. And with the longevity comment from one of the comments in the section, you know, will you be here next year? And, you know, many of you won't be able to answer that because you've just got this newfound money. You've been chasing this, 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 everything's working and it's, you know, great. But you have no strategy. You don't know risk management. You don't know the first thing about a filing. You don't know the first thing about a, a setup. You're just buying whatever stock is up and it just happens to keep on going up which is great. <laughs> it works until it doesn't work. So 
I just want to challenge you, if you're watching this and you have newfound money, newfound account, and, and it's just gone up like crazy, will you be here next year? And if you can't answer that, consider education, consider um, you know, what is the path that you need to take to create that foundation to keep you here long term. That should be your goal. The goal should not be to get rich tomorrow, get rich next month. The goal should be, how can I do this 10 years from now? How can I do this 20 years from now? That should be your goal. If you start thinking those terms, you'll be here. So keep that in mind. Uh, and as usual, you know, if you have any questions about Investors Underground, reach out. Um, we deter monthly memberships. We don't really want people that are just kind of, you know, coming in to, to get rich fast. I mean, that's not our goal. We don't advertise that. And um, our, our goal is um, long term people that want to commit because we commit to all of our members. So we want commitment on the other side. Uh, last but not least, swings have been pretty nuts. M anybody that follows me on, on Twitter, M R E O, that was a nice little doubler. Uh, the mortgage theme sector, MFA, M I T T idea, those were pretty nice. Um, but you know, let's get right into scan. Uh, we've got a lot of good stuff. I'd like to remind you, it is Monday. We're coming off a very hot week. Uh, if it wasn't hot for you last week, that's okay. Just like I said, stay in your own lane. It's coming. Relax. Um, but focus on what you do best. You know, you start doing what other people are doing. It might not fit your personality. You know, certain types of swings might not be good for you. Uh, certain types of setups you might just not get. So make sure that you are staying safe out there. Um, but most importantly, if you are coming off of a hot week, put the brakes on Monday morning because I know my own weaknesses. You know, I'm going to be up here, you know, 7 a.m. I'm ready to go pushing buttons and it's, I might waste an hour of having to sit here or, or stand here uh, managing a position that makes me no money just because I was too eager and you know I put on a, a, a position. So I'm going to wait for A+. Plus. I'm trading extremely well right now. So I want to stay at that level. I've been trading extremely well all year. And the reason for that is because I'm keeping my losses to a minimum. The, the biggest loss that I want to take is one day, two days max loser. Right? I want to be able to make it back within a day. If you keep to that strategy, you're never going to fall off that, that full cylinders, you know, blaring ahead, you know, doing well. Right? Um, if you set yourself back a week, two weeks, that's when you're going to run into trouble. That's when you're going to run into um, that, that make back, uh, I, I got to make it all back. Well, normally I would take a stock off here, but it's not enough, so I'm going to I'm going to hold on and then you start to do all this, you know, backtracking and uh, all these bad uh, decision making uh, ideas. And and that's kind of what my point is with all these people that have just made a bunch of money trading. Go ahead. Wire out so that if and when this does happen, you're you, you at least have something to show for it. Uh, let's get right into scan and, and I think I'm a faster pace than the first time that I did this for 40 minutes. But, uh, anyway, um, and again, leave, uh, leave comments, anything that you, you heard me say, uh, that, that was like, oh, aha, uh -huh, like an aha uh -huh moment, leave it because it helps me help you guys. When I, when I do these first 15 minutes, 20 minutes of the scan, um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, to keep it as real as I can and pass on you know what I see happening and most of the time it's been pretty timely so um, I take a lot of what you guys you know say in the in the comment section and and I try to fit it into uh, the the response or, or at least the, the start of the scan every Sunday so I do appreciate you guys leaving those as well as you know as as you guys know once a month we pick uh, a member to experience IU uh, once a month we do Momo Trader book and then the rest of the time we send out t-shirts. So AAL, um, first and foremost, trade of the year. Great. So what am I scared about? I'm scared about being overconfident on the trade. Crush it on Thursday, crush it on Friday, right? So that is most important to reset, refocus next, right? Trade didn't happen. Monday's a new day. Treat it as any other day. 
if you treat it as if you know you know everything about it you have a solid read on it you're not going to be wrong you're going to get bent and so i need to be aware of that first and foremost so anyway higher the better ideally if we have a market gap this should gap uh 1950s 20 would be ideal probably run into some resistance into the 20 range uh that was where most of the volume was on uh friday and ideally look for failed fall through momentum 9:45, 10 a.m if it doesn't gap up and, it's, and it, it opens red i'm still interested i'm still interested a lot of times people take things off because they open red not me uh, and I learned that from Phil Godecker. You know, you, you always are prepared for this perfect, you know, setup and gap up and all this stuff, but it doesn't always happen. But you still think there's going to be a lot of downside, so why wouldn't you still be interested? So that was one thing. I always used to take things off of radar once they opened red, and he never did. And so that was one thing that I pulled from, from him. But anyway, um, and again, if you click the link, that says uh, link to the blog post of the scan. You can see everything I'm saying verbally as well as some other thoughts. I, I write it all out uh, as well as the charts too. So anyway, um, like I said, higher the better, 20s ideally. Otherwise, look maybe 19 over and under. Uh, I'll have a plan by 8.50 a.m. in the morning when once I take the, the microphone. Uh, NCLH and CCL, cruise lines. So nice trade on Friday. Anybody that saw that one on, on Twitter, uh, the trade idea anyway worked out nicely, but I didn't think the trade was going to be that day like the big trade. Uh, I thought, you know, you take the trade and, and make sure you take it off as well. I had a nice unwind both on CCL. Uh, NCLH was the only one that I traded any, any size at all. So you can see that there's a little bit of resistance here. So in a perfect world, we gap up and we want to retest that 24 level. Um, look for fail fall through momentum from there. Be aware that these things are reversing off the lows. They've really, really beaten. Um, back when solars were beaten down for a long time, this is many years ago, that was one of the first ones that I kept on getting squeezed on. And it was a situation like this where you think, you know, it's, it's come up too much. But you got to remember, there's so much money on the sidelines right now that's just itching to get back in, itching to know, okay, is it safe yet? All right, I'll dabble in. So there's going to be buyers on the dips. So that's why when I short and I shorten size, it's got to be an A plus setup. It's got to be an overextension parabolic move like AAL. So if I do short the cruise lines, it's got to be a gap up, a parabolic, or I have to be joining a trend that is already bearish, that is fail follow through. I've got set risk off VWAP, things like that. I don't want to get fall into a, a situation where it's like these things have to pull back because uh, I think a lot of people are probably already there and getting squeezed, and that's why we're having these types of moves. So um, let's see what happens, but CCL and NCLH are going to be keys for me. Again, plan by 8.50 a.m. on the microphone, uh, as we do every single morning. LK, the advice that I gave to the room on Friday was, this is a trading vehicle, not a coffee company. So if you think about it with you know everything that they went through, uh, the fabrication of numbers, the whatever you want. Um, you're, I, I think you're trading it wrong. This is all that matters right now is price. Very clean setup. You can see just how well VWAP would help you. Uh, traded both those pops short, covered the washes in the room, uh, re-added right over here in the in the room live. It's got 230 million shares, so I have no problem sharing my my uh, thought process lives on those. Um, live on those. Uh, obviously, low float type names, not happening. <laughs> but um, great opportunities. Ideally, it ramps back up towards VWAP, maybe even a little higher. As I said, we could be in for a six, seven, eight, nine kind of move. We could be in for an outlier situation here. Um, the more it holds, we've, we've traded a half a billion shares over the last two days, 280 or 90 million and then 230 million. So that's a lot. And um, as it churns and people are betting on zero because it's a, a fraud, whatever, yeah, they fabricated numbers, but um, as that kind of plays out and the price holds and the volume fades off, if there's a lot of shorts that are outsized, we're gonna get a good move. So yeah, I wanna short it, but don't be overly aggressive um, if the trend is holding. And also don't 
underestimate the fact that this could squeeze out. So there is a possibility I'd get long. Uh, but in a perfect world, we get a six gap up, uh, shoves towards this prior high over here. Let people exhaust out. You don't want to be part of the exhaustion process. Let it squeeze people out, squeeze people out. And as it kind of goes a little bit lower and lower and lower, that's when you want to start to get involved. Uh, don't be part of the first push and add and add and add as it goes higher because then you become the exhaustion that I look for and then I enter. This part of the scan is uh, failed follow through. So again, if you click the link in the description, you can go over to the Investors Underground, the blog page, it has different um, setups. So failed follow through, XSPA, uh, this was great. They put out a PR pre-market, they're, they're getting very smart. They let it fade off and then they put the PR out to squeeze everybody. So uh, great opportunity. Uh, I got short as, as noted in the room, nice failed follow through momentum. And uh, I, I had a, a pretty decent position on, I covered two thirds of it at the close. I am still, uh, I'm still fading it for now just because I had such a good position. I'd love a gap up. Uh, people ask, well, you're short. Why do you want a gap up? Because I want to, I want a, I want to add. I want to get back to my full size. I want higher the better. Uh, and then look for failed follow through. I'm not looking to, to top ticket. I'm not looking to, to bet that it has to go down. I'm looking to be proven correct. And as it fails, I will, you know, scale in accordingly. Uh, but this, just like I said, uh, like save, you know, when you are trading a, a lot of size, you got to be ready because you can just see how fast this slam down swipes right back up. So, you know, it might not seem like a lot for, you know, people depending on your size, but that right there could be a $50,000 swing. If you weren't prepared, you just missed out on 50K P&L. So depending on, you know, the type of trader you are, things that help is being prepared uh, when things like that happen. And being prepared is with wish orders. You know, when you get into the position, you have a general idea of where you think it's gonna go. So why not put a couple ducks out there? And then that way, if it flushes out like that, you get filled. So anyway, that's the uh, main one for a failed follow through, FRSX, higher the better, look left. Ideally comes in 130, 140s, then fades off. I don't think it's gonna happen, but that's ideal. Uh, CIDM, this is uh, looking for a quiet failed fall through momentum. Um, this is typically what I say when I want to just, you know, I mention it once, give you guys the idea and look for the setup to happen. I think if a lot of people do the same thing, it won't work. Uh, so, you know, as it worked out perfectly, nice ramp after the big day, everybody was watching GNUS and other stuff. Everybody forgot about this, ramped up, look left. Came right into resistance. Great trade. Was very similar to SAVA. Huge day the day before. Everybody forgot about it. Ramped up into the resistance. Great fade. That was the idea. I posted it once on Twitter for potential unwind to mid to low twos. Worked perfect. Doesn't need to be a size trade. You get on the right side, you do other trades. You let that one work. Well, nobody's looking at it. Work. Uh, I think we got a dollar to two dollar trade in here. So ideally we get some type of trend join. Um, I personally would prefer to short. Uh, ideally 33, 33, 50 gap up and then maybe fade off down to 31, 50, 31, something like that. Uh, it's been straight up. So I'm thinking that it could flush out uh, near term before it starts to turn back up. It's right back under this uh, huge chart resistance. And if you remember, you know, you can just draw a line across it. It's it took forever to get over 30. So I could see it flushing back under 30 before it decides to get back up higher. Then uh, last but not least on the failed follow through, always great. Um, any big moves up on Mark have been being faded. Uh, this story is starting to, you know, unwind. Uh, you know, yeah, Vegas is open. Yeah, great. They've got their things there, but they're going to make more selling stock than they ever will in revenue. So keep that in mind. Um, this stock, this, as I've said before, they're public to sell paper. Uh, so as they get the authorized shares up and things like that, this story will play out. It's going to not be, you know, the theme anymore. People will start to sell these types of things. Um, you know, COVID's going to disappear ideally and they're not going to be needed. And, you know, it was just more of a, uh, PR success than anything else. So 
Uh, other than that, themes, uh, continued theme uh, that we've been discussing, oil and gas. I thought it was going to uh, heat up, and it, it did in a big way. So OAS and WLL and CRC, those were three that I said I was buying dips in the room on Friday. So I held all of those over. I sold uh, some of OAS and WLL into the strength. I always like to sell a little bit if it closes super, super strong, which it did. Uh, because then sometimes you get a little pullback after hours, you're able to re-add. So have positions on those. I also have positions uh, LLEX and ENSV. This one swiped up midday. LLEX was another one where I traded it before. It was a phenomenal uh, breakout. I overstayed. I was up huge at the top and then uh, ended up minimizing the position. But uh, regardless, uh, what happens is FTSI is an example. This just did a reverse split. But last time we woke up and there was, you know, maybe maybe not a huge, uh, you know, staying power. I think this time it'll be a little bit different. But we woke up and there was there was over a dozen, maybe maybe six to twelve in between there stocks that were up 50, 60, 80, 100 percent. So that's all I'm going for. I'm going for potential. Spread it across a bunch of names. And you know people are going to be chomping at the bit, looking for that next, you know, big runner. And uh, so FTSI was a crazy one, as well as this was a recent idea, which worked out really nicely. Uh, the idea was off NBR, which has squeezed out like crazy, which is suggesting that if you chase low flow reverse split oil and gas names, it's smart, right? So then that fueled CHK, which then may fuel um, LPI which I also have a position on, which is a, another recent reverse split. So this could be like a CHK. So you got to understand the, the, the thought process, the theme, what's hot right now, what's working. And you know, that's, that's what's working. So with that said, LLEX, Cheapy, as well as ENSV, a lot of volume on them, a lot of action on uh, Friday, especially LLEX had some uh, after hours as well, a lot of good volume and load. Um, so I look for these because you know that people spent the entire weekend looking for what stock they're going to buy uh, in the event that oil is hot on Monday. And I'm just thinking that we might have some gap ups. And if it goes 25, 30, people in this market might chase it 40, 50. So uh, be aware, be, be, be ready uh, that if there's some other ones, you know, it might be worth playing uh, for 30, 40, 50 cents. But if they fail, if they start to you know break down, don't overstay. Uh, veil was also on watch. Uh, great volume here. No position uh, that I have on or anything like that, but potential of a gap fill. What I like about it is nearly 140 million volume. I always like volume. Uh, M, BBBY, and KSS, my top three for a potential retail trade. This just filled the gap. You can see back over here, it had a big gap down. So I'm gonna be watching those three as my retail kind of names. Macy's is always a good one to watch for an overall understanding. Um, but in the event we get a pullback in the market, a pullback in the retail sector, I'll be leaning on those. I wanna be just prepared, I wanna see the charts. Last but not least, I have a bunch of names. Uh, you're gonna to have to click through the blog post, I'm not gonna go over them right now. Uh, but they're all for price alerts. The most important part is to stay familiar with these charts. So for example, I have save ARNC and I'll just show you a couple of them. So ARNC, you can see why I'm interested. It's straight up, right? So when it starts to pull back, I'm going to have price alerts, you know, whether it's 18, 1750, 17, 1650, 16, I'm going to be alerted when I need to know that way I don't have to watch it. I don't have to have it up on a ticker to see it. So typically the way that I do price alerts is, you know, I'll set some tomorrow for 19, 19, 50, 20, 21, you know, so on and so forth. And as they hit, I'll set them to the downside as well. So when 20 hits, I'll set 19, 50, 19, you know, 18, 50. That way it never falls off radar, but it doesn't take space on my, on my screen. And same thing with OLLI. You know, we're going to have a huge trade here. There's no sense watching it every single day but I wanna know when it breaks out of this consolidation. So just some ideas. I've got about 10 charts there. I wanna stay familiar with them. 
Uh, that's how I do it. That's how I stay, you know, ready to go and see what is ready for uh, that big pullback. Uh, that's exactly how and why I saw uh, PRTS. So uh, many nailed it in the room right over here. Huge $2 pullback. And the only reason I saw it was because a price alert went off. Same thing with LOVE. Uh, this was another one. Straight up, straight up, straight up. It hit a price alert to the downside. Whoops. Pull that back down. Uh, it hit a price alert to the downside that I had set at 20. And then it continued to fade off the rest of the day. So keep that in mind. Uh, I hope to see you guys in the room. If you have any questions, reach out. And I think that's about it. As usual, leave a comment, write something uh, that was a key takeaway or an aha moment for you. And next week I'll be picking uh, more winners. So uh, have a great weekend, guys, and thanks for watching.